So once you raise the hand, uh, Sha will unmute you, and then you can you can basically we can basically ask any many as many questions as you want. Okay, so let's begin. So before induction, I think hopefully by now you should all have received your starter pack or induction pack. So the pack contains all the paperwork you need uh, for your job. So make sure you fill them all in and send them to the medical workforce department as well as booking an appointment or ID check as well. Without these three, I don't think you'll be allowed to even attend the induction. So make sure you do that at first. And then after a couple of weeks time, you should receive a link uh, for you to register an online induction. So make sure you do that before you're starting your job. And also, um, after completing the online induction, you will get paid or you get some time out in deal for that. So it's important for you to do that. Some of the trusts, like my trust, um, they offer me uh, ALS course, uh, which is known as advanced life support. This is a very useful course which teaches you about as a resuscitation. Um, so it's especially useful if you're doing a medical job or um, emergency medicine job. Uh, this job, uh, so this course has got like limited spaces. So make sure you book that early and get it put on. And I think it is also uh, one of the requirements of you um, have to complete um, before you finish your foundation year. Uh, for those of you who don't drive, um, of course you have to arrange your public transport. And for those of you who drive, like myself, um, make sure you get your parking permit before you before you park at the hospital, or else you get a ticket. So on the day of trust induction, I would say the first, the most important thing is be on time, because you have only got one morning, and you have to sort out three things or, or more. So you have to you have to sort out your photo ID. You have to get your ID account. If your trust is using your electronic prescription, you get account as well. And consider the fact that there are so many people and so many colleagues as you are registering, so they, you might not be able to have a chance if you don't come in early. So that's why I would suggest you come in early, get yourself registered, um, and immediately go to queue for your photo ID, and then register for ID account or electronic prescription account. Uh, I've, I've got some people ask me whether should they join the mess or not. For me, I would say I would strongly recommend that because it is a very good place for you to get know of your colleagues or even can be friends as well. F1 is not a very easy job, so definitely you need some emotional and social support. So it is very important for you to have some friends around and if you are, if you are having some difficulty. So after the trust induction morning, so in the afternoon usually it's your department. This is more important because it's more related to your job. So there are three people you have to know uh, for, in the, uh, for departmental induction. The first one is your clinical supervisor, and the second one is your education supervisor. Usually it's your first, so usually they are the same person for the first rotation. Um, so why is it important? Because you have to schedule a meeting with them uh, at the beginning, also at the end of your rotation uh, for your portfolio. You also need to know who is your voter coordinator because you need to know how to apply for annual leave. Um, so applying annual leave, there are a couple of ways. Different departments use different ways. So some departments, they, you can just uh, WhatsApp the voter coordinator and you can take a leave and some requires a lot of paperwork. If you are the later one, that means you have to plan a bit earlier on so that you can complete all the documentation and submit all in one go and get the leave. So I would suggest for leave, you have to start planning now before um, uh, before you before you before everything. And for the induction, they will talk about every single shift pattern. So make sure you know what is the job of every single shift. And also, being an F one is not just about work; it's also about learning. So if you're interested in the specialty itself, for example, if you're interested in surgery. You should you should try to ask for a theater sessions, and um, you should also you should also try your best to join in so that you can practice your surgical skills in there. Some departments are quite good. For example, like my department, I'm working in pediatric at the moment. Um, my boss brought me for a departmental tour just to get know of all the staff in there, and also I received one some basic training of how to take a capillary blood gas. Um, 
during my induction as well from one of the registrar. I found that very helpful before starting the job. But that depends on your department. After your one intense day of induction, so the trust usually offers you a week of scheduling. So scheduling is a time that you should ask all the questions you want. And also you should you should try all the things you want to try. And also you should make all the mistakes you want to make. Because you don't have any time to make you shouldn't make any mistake when you are when you are starting as a FY1. So make sure you use your time well in your scheduling. I would say, first of all, as I emphasized just now, make sure you get there beyond time because that you can give a good impression to your boss and also to your grad so that your life will be much easier. Uh, make sure you get know all your system and documentation. Uh, if you are working on a clocking shift, you need to know where are the clocking performers, you need to know how to request your blood, you need to know how to see your blood results, you need to know how to request a chest X-ray, and also you need to know how to where to see the chest X-ray. Usually it's from the tech system, so online. And also, if you don't know something, you should know where to get the guidelines from. So these are something very important for you to learn in shadowing. And of course, shadowing is a time for you to know how to do your job. So I've listed some of the main some of the main work jobs you should do in in daily basis. Uh, I'm not going to go through one each by each. So I will go through all of them in detail for the next session. How to be a useful work person. But feel free to ask questions later on if you have any questions. So apart from the induction uh, and, and also uh, shadowing, so there are also some extra training sessions uh, you guys are required to attend. I would say the most two important ones are the bucket machine and also the research simulation. So the first one is the bucket machine. Uh, it is usually a one hour session and then you just you basically just need to attend the session and then you get a code. Sparkle allows you to basically run the bucket by using machine. Um, so I, I saw a lot of people who got a barcode and they try to run them and then try to run an emergency bucket. Um, I think and I don't think it's going to get anywhere. So I would say just get it done straight away, get your barcode so that you don't you won't be in fiasco when you're trying to find someone to get to run the bucket. Um, for research, um, so research simulation, I think is one of the requirement now for foundation year program. Uh, so it is a very a limit, it has very limited space. So make sure you register that early, and then get your and then get yourself a space for that. And manual handling and infection control that usually depend on trust. So this is just a very very brief introduction about induction. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. So feel free to raise up your hands and ask as many questions as you want. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sam. That was great. Um, so if you guys have um, any questions, um, just pop. You can either pop them on the chat, or if you wanna, if you want, we can have like a nice conversation. So um, just um, if you, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself, or I could unmute you. Um, and um, can we locum in F1? Can we locum is in F1? Yes, you can locum in F1, but you can only locum in the F1 job. So I've done a couple of locum in pediatrics. Um, yes, and they, I'm, so my rate is around 35 pounds per hour. I'm not sure about the amount of it. You might get a bit high in London. But yeah, you can um, locum in F1, definitely. Yeah, I think they also have changed some restrictions for those um, non-UK national you still have a working hour limit, but because of COVID, now you can look them for unlimited hours. And Sam, is that only in specialties that you've worked in that you can look them in? Mm, not really. So, uh, for example, like if I want to, so I haven't done a medical job yet. So I've only done general surgery and pediatrics. Um, and they still send the invitation to look them in general medicine job. Okay. So, yeah, so you can look them in F1 definitely. When are uh, we expected to complete our Horus portfolio and what do we need to put in them? Okay, very, very good question. So, um, so this 
So I'm going to talk more about host portfolio. Um, so there's a separate lecture for that. Uh, but I can just give you some brief ideas. So for Horace portfolio, um, so have you heard of something called ARCP? So basically, ARCP usually takes place in around June time. So um, you sh but usually you should be constantly updating the portfolio, or else if you don't update your portfolio, you um, you, you just cram everything up in it. It's going to be very miserable. So make sure you do you do update your portfolio as much as you can. And what do you need to put on in there? So there's a requirement. Um, so that would be including your meeting, um, your self, your, your SLDs, so including your mini tags or DVDs. So these I will explain more in detail. So basically, it's just, it's just it's a, like a appraisal in work. And also there are also some certificates you have to upload, including your PSA and also um, ALS. So these you guys have to do as well, and a lot and some trust have to basically do a lot of reflections. So that really depends on trust. So my trust say up to four per rotation, but of course of COVID now they are being more lenient right now. Um, okay, good. Someone is asking about QI project. So. What other QI, what other QI project can we do other than audit? So you need to so audit and QI projects are different. Uh, you know, as a it's a different thing. So from my knowledge, so based so I so that's what you should have how I do that. Um, of course, there is another session uh, which is about quality improvement project. So you guys are very welcome to join. I'm going to talk more in detail, but I can give you a basic idea. So Q, so quality improvement project usually usually comes with an audit. So you can just do an audit and then you can do two rounds and then you, you make some improvement that that would be become a quality improvement project. So this is just in a nutshell. Do we get paid doing e-learning? Yes, but depends. Uh, some trust say you can have uh, time off in lieu. But yes, they should um, so it depends on what you mean by e-learning. So I'm talking about the induction, but if you're saying the e-learning so the actual e-learning online, then um, then you, it counts on to your teaching hours. So I think you've got six. So there are six hours, um, less than six hours you can put it onto your teaching. So uh, so I'm going to, so that so I'm going to talk a bit more later. But I think um, usually you have got sixty. You need to attend minimum sixty hours of teaching, which including thirty hours of mandatory teaching for everyone. Uh, do you recommend doing any presentation preparation before starting work? Um, so preparation. So preparation. To be honest, uh, I don't. I, I don't think you have to be particularly prepared for that because you just learn from yourself. And if you all try to over prepare, that is just going to stress you out. But if you are, I know some of you are working as a um, interim F one. But that's a very good preparation. So. Uh, so, so thank you very much for doing that as well for the country and also I think it's very good for your uh, personal growth as well. Mm -hmm, thank you. How many days of annual leave do you get per rotation? So um, so my for my one, I get nine annual leave for first rotation, nine annual leave for the second rotation, and then ten annual leave for the third rotation. In total twenty eight days. But uh, if you work on bank holiday you get your time off in due as well. Um, how could you prepare for general surgery jobs the F1? Do you have any tips or help about the job? General, um, if you start off in general surgery job, like what I did, it is, it is a challenge, but you will learn a lot. I would say, I would, I would say learn how to prioritize them. Because, they, because surgeons have got different priorities. They would love to power, they love to do the answers and do all the discussion before the last day. Yeah, so make sure you know your priority. If you know your priority, that's fine. But uh, I will talk more about it in the next session, how to be a useful work person. Um, yeah, but generally, you should relax. Are you? Are we paired with an F2 drink induction? So, depending on trust. So, my trust, um, so, during induction, so so you so so during shadowing you will be paired you 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 will be paired up with um 
with an F1 that's going to be F2. Um, so, so he or she will let you know uh, basically uh, what to do in daily basis and let you to try out every single thing. Uh, and, but also there is like a um, buddy program in our trust. So there's a app, but that's, I think that's more for um, shoulder support and stuff. But yeah, people are usually generally quite nice to help if you don't afraid to ask. Regarding contracts, when do we get them checked by BMA? Is a this is a difficult question, I'm sorry. Um, I don't think I have the answer for this. I think um, I mean, I've heard BMA there's a there's there's a there's a program you can put your rotor on the BMA website and so that you can check whether it's compliant or not. But definitely uh, get in touch with the BMA representative. Um, if you uh, um, HDS, if you if you want to know about this, uh, just drop me an inbox, and I can I can send you to appropriate appropriate person to answer this question. What paperwork do you need to solve before induction other than getting my GMT number to then up the step form? Is there anything well? Yes, there are a lot of forms. So I remember for my one, I should fill out like um, so uh, my tax form, my income form. So there's a form for the mass, there's a form for car parking, um, there's a form for national insurance and stuff. So lots of things. Yeah. But the, yeah, so but just fill really, really in them all. Okay. Just to clarify, this is a simple answer you send it as soon as you get it. Okay. Just to clarify in case other uh, in my situation, my trust has not sent induction test out yet. I've been in touch with them, and they suggested this would happen in a couple of weeks. The process delayed the blood COVID and the injury process. Yes, your trust won't forget about you. Don't worry. They need people to work for them. So that's fine. Just chill out. Wait for them. But if they don't get back to you in a couple of weeks, I'm definitely go to them again. I'm sh I'm sure they will they will arrange something for you. What do you? What should you receive a contract legally? Is it six week or eight week starting? So so you receive something called work schedule, and this um this something is a, so this is something about what is your uh, shift pattern like, as well as uh, how you should get paid. Um so you should you should receive that before your work, but because sometimes it constantly changes, so they might just keep on sending you an updated one. But if you haven't receive from them, definitely get in touch with medical workforce. They are the one uh, who are responsible for that. Is this how we call that? Yes. So Shah has recorded that and we are going to put it on Facebook. Do you recommend anything you should buy for F1? Uh, I think you need your stethoscope. Definitely need your pen. Because you are going to write a lot. I, have been, I ran out Basically, I used it up like at least 10 pens <laughs> throughout the last year. I mean, till now, not even a year. So definitely get some more pens. Yeah, and then of course, um, yeah, get your get yourself some comfy shoes and clothes. Dress more, dress professionally. How do zero How do zero hour days work? So zero hour days. Um, I'm sh I think that means it's your day off. So basically. It is something that you, it is something that's on your rotor, you just take it off, but I think it's, but they always say something, oh, it's not mandatory for you to be off, but yeah, it's just basically a day off. Will these seminar be taking place at the same time and day every week? So uh, I'm currently planning to do a monthly teaching. So the next session uh, is about how to be a useful work person that will take place in June time. I haven't decided a date yet, but I will let you know. I have to see my rotor as well. Uh, how much would you recommend contributing to the mass donation monthly? Uh, I don't think you have to. I think usually it's a mass fee that I have to pay. So now I'm paying, I'm paying fifteen pounds for my, for my mass fee. Um, I don't know, is it fifteen or thirty? Yeah. Around that, around that number, not a lot of amount, yeah. So it's this quantity pick up taken from my base leaf. So I don't know. I don't think you have to contribute, donate anything. You just need to pay the monthly fee to get to use the use the man. Any advice of finding a place to live near to the hospital? 
Um, so there are a couple options. So uh, first of all, um, hospital accommodation. I know in Wales or in some other places, they provide you free accommodation. You need to, you need to approach the um, accommodation office. Uh, some of that, uh, some of some of the uh, some of the other parts. Um, usually, um, hospital accommodation is not are not that great. So, um, but you should, but if you are in the Facebook group for each scenery, there are a lot of people advertising about their house, their flat. So feel free to get in touch with them. Feel free to arrange your viewing, even though it's COVID lockdown time. Um, but yeah, or you can do a virtual viewing as well. Yeah. Oh my God, there are a lot of things going on in my. <laughs> I think then. So the next question is: Do you recommend opting out of the forty-eight hour um, European Working Time Directive restriction? Recommend. Oh, that's a that's that's a, a that's a very good question to ask. Um, I would I would say I would say the forty forty hour working hour restriction has its own advantage because um it, because to be honest, being a doctor is very it's very drain energy draining. You need time for a break. But of of course, if you want to do some more from just to earn some money, definitely go for it. And what's the next question? Could you describe a typical day of F1 night many fans? So, I, so it's basically it's on my slide. So if you look at the ward job slide, basically you attend a ward round, and then and then prescribe medication during the ward round. If some and then you start doing your, you start um, ordering some scan, doing PTOs, um, taking blood, doing cannulas, review sick patients. Yeah, these are the things that you do, but depending on your shift, this is the normal one. But sometimes we've got work coverage, sometimes we've got like um, backing shift and things. Now I think I have to change a bit of the angle because of the glare. Is there any issue we need to get before starting? Uh, I subscribe to MDU, so yeah, so it's 10 pounds and it's quite good. Are we able to request any leave from our trust before we have started? There, if we know certain day off, we should be from there. Yes. So if you know who is the quota coordinator, feel free to get in touch. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can do that. Because, because when we have shipping rotation, some of us we end up in night and then and of course we can't go to the next rotation next day. So that's why we have to speak to the water coordinator. But yeah, if you know the water coordinator, yes, definitely do that. We have the hospital contact to fill out a DBS form. Um I think you have to DBS form is it the one the, the one about your um, behavior and stuff, isn't it? It's like the, so, the criminal check one, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So I think you have to provide them. Or if you give them the name, they can, or number, they can check it online. Yeah, I think there are now there's online service. Can you join the mass data by first visit a different hospital than the main one? Yes, you can join the mass anytime. Yeah, I think it's not a compulsory thing. How do you find local to work as an F1? That usually is a um, human resources system. So my my trust use a system called Temporary, and we just find jobs out there. Or sometimes the consultant might ask you. For example, for all my local shifts, my consultant asked me to work extra hours, so I just say yes. Other than 28 days and leave, can you request some more days off in chunk of exceptional circumstances? Wedding? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. Um, but, but that has to be discussed with your order coordinator. Is hospital or bride to provide compensation if you have a risk view at home? Um, I think that, that depends on circumstances. I think you, if you ask your accommodation office, they can arrange something. Probably. How many days of study leave are we allowed to rotation? So for F1, there's no study leave. There's no, there's no study leave. But you are allowed for like a week of um, it's a week to go, and also for your mandatory course as well. And in person, Canada, what other procedures do you often do as an F1? Um, so there, so these are so these are like, like 80, 90 percent of the things I do as a Canada. And sometimes if we, um, we might be asked to do if you are keen, so you can. You can try to you can try to participate in some more advanced procedure. So, for example, I have done a lumbar puncture on child. I have went into theater and do some suturing. I have I, I have uh, cauterized 
or knows to be. Yep, so you can try to get involved in some more things you would like to, but Lux and Canada are the basic requirements for you to. It's a typical F1 voter, Monday, not over the Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Yes, your typical job, so it depends on the specialty. So for, so if you are working in surgery, they usually start from 8. Um, if you are working in general medicine, they start 9. So that really depends on the specialty. But yes, for normal days, you do 9 to 5. So for your own call, for my specialty, for my, I'm doing pediatric now, we are doing from 9 to 9. What is the salary currently for F1 and F2? Uh, I'm sure you can buy it online as well, but uh, for my my memory is the basic salary is twenty eight thousand, one twenty eight thousand per year, and of course with all the on call and stuff, that will add up to you around depending on where are you, that will add up to you maybe around thirty something. Yeah, so it depends on the area as well. So London, I've heard they've got high pay. Um, I'm not sure about some other places. Is it possible to get much hands-on on the experience during F1? So you have to be very smart about this one. So if you so basically, so basically, you just need your call a very kind quality of you to cover your work job, and then you can go to theater. Um, so, but uh, generally speaking, if it's if it's very busy, then you probably have to prioritize your work job before going to theater. Before going to theater. But yes, if you are keen, I'm sure definitely you can find a way. But you just have to discuss with your judge if your actual is to find a cover. What specialty exams do you recommend doing during F1 and F2? Suki, you are very keen, apparently, <laughs> you're thinking of doing that. So it depends on what specialty you want to apply. So for, I think for medicine uh, or pediatrics, um, I don't think there is like a requirement for that. But for some more competitive specialty, for example surgery, um, they expect you to do MLC as part A, and I'm also preparing for that as well. If you are interested in surgery, feel free to give me a heads up, give me an inbox, and I can talk to you more about that. To get involved in Peter's session, who you who will need to talk to? I just said, uh, talk to your rash, talk to your consultant. Um, so usually it's consultant based decision. If the consultant is happy with you, you can you can join and as uh, whenever you like. Just make sure you've got someone to cover your work. How does annual leave work? To get a whole week off, you need to take seven days or five days. Um, so it depends on the rotor. So on, for on-call shift, you have to swap with someone else in order to in, in, in order to get it. So so for on-call shift, you're composed. You're you're basically meant to be there. So unless you get a swap. Um, but if you are like working normal days from nine to five, then yes. Um, you can take five days off if you're not meant to work on the weekend. How often do you need to stay later than 5 p.m.? Do you need to come in early to prep patients? Knows how much earlier do you get go in? Um, that that depends on your specialty actually. So for for some for example, um, for surgery, um, I use I I used to stay till quite late. To, so just to complete your job, but at that time I wasn't really good at my job as well. But with time being, if you are being more slick with your job, and then if there are not much, not much things to do, then even I can I left at three sometimes <laughs> when I was doing general surgery. So yes, so that so that really depends on situation. But uh, they sh but you shouldn't. But to be honest, you shouldn't stay more after five. Because, and you should exceptionally report that. Um, when you are when you stay after five. How far in advance you can book your annual leave? As I said, if you know your order coordinator, you can book any time if you want. You have an official lunch break or you go you can go whenever. I just go whenever I have enough time. So yes, that's it. Any more questions? Does, does anyone want to say something or to raise up their hand? Uh, where can you find out about taster days or taster week? So what I did was I, I so basically I just emailed the consultant of the specialty that I want to go to, and they just and I and I just say I want I want to attend a taster week, and then they just say yes or they say no. But you have basically you have to come up with a day that um 
basically your department is not um, backing up people and the other side they're happy to take you as well. Do you exceptional report when you didn't get time for food bank in a day or how long should your break be? There's a no there's a no time limit for break, but uh, I would I would suggest that you should I would suggest that don't work yourself too hard, honestly. You if you work yourself too hard and skip in lunch and stuff, you are not going to be very efficient. I can tell you from my personal experience. So definitely have your have your lunch. If you can't do your job, either you hand over that. If you want an exceptional report, you can speak to your branch or speak to your consultant. I'm sure some of them they are happy for you to accept your report. But yeah, definitely definitely don't skip your break. Do you see many other elves around you in the day, or are you by yourself? Um, depending on which team are you in. So I'm currently working in pediatrics. There are only two FY ones in the department. So basically, I just um, it basically depends on the rota. Sometimes I see him, sometimes I just I don't really see him. Uh, but yeah, so I but when I was working in general surgery, I see the people quite a lot. So we all, we actually. We have a very good relationship together. We went out for hiking for one time. So yeah, so depends on which specialty are you at actually. Mm. When were you able to maintain a good work life balance as the FY1? Um, I would say at first I was struggling. Because I was I started with general surgery and I had to stay late every day to still finish all my job. So but I but when just when now thinking back I should have, I should have like, yeah, I, I should have do something better. For example, like hand over the job that I haven't done, um, exceptional report. But yes, um, and also, I think, I think you, and also it's important to find hobbies for yourself because that, that's one of the rest of the very senior registered for me. You should find your hobbies because it's not, as I said, being an athlete is just not all of a word. You should be able to learn and also to relax, relax your life as well. Okay, uh, imagine your P rotation was to IPM. Do you especially for Oh no, that was in general surgery. P was fine. Because P is you we have you we have got um hand over every day. But no, uh but no, I didn't exceptional report. I regretted about that. So yes, don't be like me. And this on staying organized. Um power powerization is important. We'll talk more about that next. And also make sure you got a list. So for all the work jobs, uh, I saw a lot of people. They just should write on. They they like to write on the paper. And when you and when you finish a job, you take it. And for some of the chasing job, you highlight that and make sure you just make sure you chase that. Apart from prioritizing and organizing, any tips to efficient working pattern? Mm, I think if you know your job, you. Sh I think after a while, when you get used to the job. You will, um, you you will be able to know how it runs, and then you be you start to become more efficient. But yes, but just start getting on that and see. If you struggle, ask your colleague for help. I'm sure a lot of people they are willing to help you as well. How much has changed due to coronavirus, and how will this affect us in August when we start? I I think you guys are going to start in August, from what I know. Don't call me on that. Any advice on working in a team. You need to know different people have different personalities. And I think it's about a balance. So if you know if you know their personality well, you can try either so at the end it's about like how you guys accommodate each other, how you guys so get along. So so I was I would I would suggest like try to get get try to get know Try to get all your colleagues a bit well, and and then and then you guys after you guys build a relationship, it's easier for you to work. Uh, where am I? Sorry, I'm lost. It. Char, can you? Um, yeah, what is exceptional report? Do all hospitals have that? Yes, exceptional report. That means you will work over hours. You are not supposed to use an exceptional report. Yes, all hospitals have them. You just speak to something called guardian of safe working. Um, yes, every hospital should have that. What thing you, you should or shouldn't hand over at the end of the day? I don't think there's a requirement for that. 
okay? I think as long as you haven't completed the job, you can handle you can hand over that. But yes, definitely hand over things to case, important things to case, or uh, something, some or some of the patient that you need to be aware of. Um, depends especially pediatrics, uh, you go through everyone, but um, for general surgery, we just hand over the one that are really safe or that's some, uh, some outstanding job. For example, scan result has been done, or um, blood has been, blood result has been back. Which we shall not hand over, as I explained. Uh, have you had any problem with your team members? If so, how do you manage that? So actually, um, I so I used to work with a colleague who was just kept on being panicked. And I think I, and basically, I think we at the end had a chat with her and then just find what she is worried about. And then we try to come all day. So we found out that she is a bit worried about um, writing things wrong on the TTO and stuff, and still unsure about clinical review. But she's happy to do all the canon and stuff. So at the end, actually, we get on well. So she's happy to take all the difficult canon and stuff, and we are happy and we review all the patients. So yeah, I think it's just to know your colleague well. If you know your colleague well, you sh you know how to compensate them. Do you make any mistake while working? And if so, how you resolve them? Uh, well, I mean, we all made mistakes. I, if I say no, you wouldn't believe it. Um, not going to specify any, but uh, I would say um, there's some there, there's something called um, there, 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 there's something called duty of condolence. You made a mistake. You should um, you should be honest to the patient. First of all, patient safety first from GMC. Um, if so. So if anything is com um, compromised, the pain safety, you should definitely raise this concern to your consultant or to your reg. But of course, your guys that have done SJD, you should raise it to your SSO and then to your reg. So it's a hierarchy thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, if ever made mistake, but but it's important. Just as long as the patient is safe, um, um, that's fine. Do you wear scrubs all day in surgical jobs? No, I didn't. But now, because of COVID, I actually wear a scrub when I'm working in pediatrics, but I'm in hot water. Hey, uh, we will wrap up the question for this from you. Okay. Uh, so, I think let's just take a couple more questions. In your experience, how did international pressure cope with the demand of F11, especially in when you say Ray, do you want to, do you want to say something? Great, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, so what do you mean yeah, by that? Kind of, basically, I'm, I'm wondering because obviously I trained uh, abroad and so I haven't been trained to work in the NHS like most of the, the UK students are sort yep. of pushed towards the NHS and they've been yep. trained specifically for it. So being you know, trained not specifically for the NHS I was thinking maybe internationals might find things a little bit more difficult compared to the UK graduates. And I just wondered what your experience of seeing how the internationals cope with, you know, being in a new system and, and all the rest of it. Mm, okay, thank you for your question. Um, so as you can see, you said you're from Wales, right? A meal, a can you? Charging a million, yes. You're from Wales, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. so, uh, so first, so, so I, from what I've noticed, most of you are struggling with the language, and I don't see you struggling with the language, so that's, that's, so that's <laughs> fine already. Reflective um, English people say I do. Hmm. Um, yeah, well, I mean, as, as for what I see, I don't think you're struggling. Um, and then I, I think people, most of people struggle is either about the documentation mm -hmm. and also it's about um, our patient jobs and stuff, but everyone starts from the from the same from the same boat. With everyone, like when I started, I was basically I'm basically being blank. I'm I'm just blank as paper. So I think you will learn from you. I don't think you need to worry too much. I think you you say I'm not sure about the system in Italy, but I'm sure it's basically this, it's basically quite similar. Or do you, or do you know is well, there any difference? The the thing is we're very very theory based. It's you know really really heavy on the books, the exams and that kind of stuff, and there's less emphasis on the practical side of things. So 
We don't really okay. have so much, you know, exposure. Go and do this. Go, and, you know. Yeah, you mean cannula and stuff. Cannula and blood and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's a it's a matter of practice. Even I'm I'm UK trained. I wasn't good at that at the beginning. I need to be friendly with you. And I'm sure, like, you, if you ask a couple more people, we all struggle at one point. Yeah. But I think it's a matter of keep practicing. Don't be scared to do blood. So I used to have a psychology say, like, oh, if I have a, if I have a candle, that made my that basically screw up my day. But don't yeah. be like that. Be more open, be more willing to learn, and cannula is a matter of time. In, yeah, get yeah. to get stuck in. Yeah. Uh, there was a question here, um, taking extra exams in the UK. Um, actually, to it depends basically where your nationality is. Um, I think it's because I was from, or because I'm from the UK or from the EU, I didn't have to sit the PLAB, but I did have to sit the IELTS, the, the English test. That yeah, I'm sure you, you passed your IELTS, so I, I don't think I, English is honestly, a problem for you. You'd be surprised. The, the IELTS absolutely is like, I don't, I don't want to say too much, but a lot of people who are native English speakers didn't get in because of it. It's uh, oh. yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, well, congratulations, you're in right now. Welcome <laughs> to the club. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks. Okay, um, yep. So let me just continue. So sorry, I just need to lean forward to see the questions. Uh, so I think the next one is: How did you choose the rotations that you're currently doing? How do I choose the rotation that um, I'm currently doing? So, uh, so first of all, I rank what jobs I want. Um, so it's so it's basically basically I'm allocated by Oreo. So yeah, I think this is my second option. Did I answer your question? I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Um, any other questions? No. Uh, so the next one is: Is there any opportunity to swap jobs? Yes, so, uh, so I, but I think you can, uh, I'm not sure whether you can swap in F1. I haven't seen an F1 swapping jobs, but I think if you speak to your foundation program director, this is also one, of, one, one it's also, this is the thing I missed it during my presentation. This is something that you should know. Um, yeah, so, so you should know who is your foundation program director. If you have some problem, you should speak to him or her about um, if you have some problem with your rotation. Stuff. Um, but yeah, I, but yeah, if you speak to him, he might, uh, he or she might give you a guidance. But F2 definitely, there's a trust for, uh, there you can swap, but depending on your deanery. My deanery, I, I just got email to say you can. Um, and then the next one, question? do you have easy access to your clinical or educational supervisor? My, my educational supervisor actually is very good, so she's happy for me to contact her for both that. Um, my previous uh, clinical supervisor um, is the completely opposite. So I emailed him, but it took days to ask him. But if you know where his office, someone, if you really want him, I, you can, I'm sure you can find him. Um, of all your questions. It's uh, how often do you meet your educational clinical supervisor? And what are some examples of questions that you would take to your educational supervisor as opposed to your clinical supervisor? Um, so you're supposed to meet your supervisor at the end, at the beginning and at the end. Uh, some supervisors prefer to meet like a midpoint review, but that, re that, but that depends on your supervisor. But yeah, you're supposed to meet at the beginning and at the end. So these are the requirements for you to pass your ARCP. Um, and, and the second part of that question was, are there, what are some examples of questions you would take to your educational supervisor instead of your clinical supervisor? Mm. So, so, so education supervisor is more related to your, your educate, your educate, for example, like if you can do all the SL, if, if you are struggling to, um, to, to get into, to, to have your learning opportunities, or um, if you are struggling to have um, to get your SLE done to get your um, sign off done, you should speak to your supervisor about that. Or if you have problems, but if you have a problem with the rotation itself, like for example, if you have a problem with general, general surgery, I should speak to my surgical clinical supervisor about it. That's the main difference. 
Yeah, but some, uh, but usually for the first rotation, they are the same. So you can upload your question. Okay, um, and then the next one, um, I think um, someone's asking about Oriel, and um, that's kind of a question to everyone about changing your email address, which some people are answering. Um, but probably the next one for you, Sam, is can you claim any expenses as a junior doctor? So, so expenses. So we can claim expenses when we go to a course, but not. But so that depends on what course is it. So for ALS, the, the one I want that support. So my trust is paying for that, so I don't have to pay anything, uh, even though I have an F1. For F2, um, you've got your education expenses. So basically, you will get, um, so you can claim back your course fee and stuff when you have to, but not as the F1, that's the advantage of it. Okay, um, and then uh, another one is, um, how much earlier before ward rounds is a good time to be at work, and how long does the note prep in the morning take? So I would say, um, if you go around 15 and 20 minutes before, I love to give myself some flexibility, just to, um, so I so I, will, I can take my time to sort out my list of patients, print out the list, print out every you know everything that I need, and get myself ready. Yep. So I would say fifteen twenty minutes is a good time. Okay. So so guys, if if um we keep it um to just a couple of questions that we've got at the moment, um just so that we have time to close at the end. Um. So the last couple of questions that we've got here are, um, can you claim conference expenses and travel or travel to and from work? I'm not sure about travel to and from work. I don't think you claim that. Uh, but if you for conferences, you can only claim when you have to because you have only got your um, teaching, uh, you have got your expenses or allowance in F2 only. Yes, not as F1. Okay. And um, someone's asking, is there a good email domain for a professional email like doctors.net.uk? I use doctors.net.uk because I think that's a very good one. Um, and you show, and also you can try to ask your IT department to sign up uh, NHS.net. That is very good one as well. Uh, but that probably takes a bit more effort to do that. Okay, so thank you guys so much for your questions. The last question from Suki says, "Will future sessions be limited to a number of participants?" So I, I know there was a bit of trouble today with. Uh, there being yeah. a lock at hundred, but then we we did have a hundred and two at one point. So I'm not sure, but we'll look into that. Really sorry about that. Um, so that we can um, see if we can get it to more people. But we're going to record all of these as well, and then we'll put them on um, the Facebook event page. So if you um, if you make sure to um, follow that, so that you can see when we're putting up our next session, um, and also um, you can see the recordings. Um, and next time, um, I think we're, we're going to look into getting on Zoom so that we've got um, uh, an unlimited number of people that we can get into them. Um, but yeah. Okay. Is there any last question before we wrap up this session? No, I think everyone's happy. Good, excellent. So thank you very much for coming for the teaching. So I will send out a feedback form online, so I will be really happy. I really appreciate you guys and you can help me to complete that as well. Uh, thank you for coming. So I will see you next month. So thank you. So how to be a good boss person. Thank Sam, you. I was just wondering if you could pop your email address as well in the chat, just in case yeah. some people missed it from your slide. Um, yeah, so, yes, so let me just thank you. Um, and we'll send out that feedback form um, on the Facebook group. Everyone? Yeah. Great. Thank you guys Thank so you much. much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. See you. Thanks, Reese.